During the heat of your campaign against Harry Thomas Jr. in 2010, we know how voters in Ward 5 initially responded to the claims that you made. Harry Thomas Jr. was re-elected overwhelmingly. But when you made those original accusations, how were you treated by people in communities within the ward? Trying to get a look into the life of Tim Day. You know, it was perceived as a political stunt, which it, it was not. Um, you know, it was very valid reasons, and I believe the uh, U.S. Attorney General stated that, you know, his case was handed to him on a silver platter. You know, and I think that we did a phenomenal job outlining, you know, where the funds came from, what he did with them, you know, in a 27-page point PowerPoint presentation with hard documentation from IRS, from solicitation never have letters. An ac- never have an accountant <laughs> running against you. That would be the lesson. Um, exactly. Um, and, you know, so I think... Um, um, it was, you know, oh, well, I can't believe you're doing this to Thomas, and I think Tom does a phenomenal job continuing to push, where's the outrage? Um, there was really no outrage versus, you know, you're a horrible person, and I continue to get that. What? Um, People continue to call you a horrible person? Oh, I, yeah. I, I got greeted um, outside of my house by some Thomas supporters the other day, um, and I refuse to let them scare me away. You know, it's time that someone stands up and uh, holds if our elected you, officials accountable. If, if you would needed. like to tell Tim Day what he's is, not um, a horrible person, you can call us at 800 <laughs> Three eight eight five zero. That's eight hundred four three three eight eight five zero. The bonus what, is making when up When you time. say greeted by, um, so I arrived home from uh, after having brunch, and there were seven individuals uh, standing in um, my sidewalk to the steps over from my front house that was not happy. They were not happy with me at this all. This was after on Thomas pled guilty in court. Yes, on my own property. And, and how uh, did that resolve itself? Um. I uh, threatened to call the police, thank goodness I had my cell phone in the hand. Um, I tried to reasonably uh, talk to them that this was not a personal thing. You know, it's uh, we have to hold our elected officials accountable. And we have to, uh, n- not just for not stealing money, but when they make promises to their constituents that they follow through with it. Right. The federal investigation into the Thomas affair is still going on, but... The president of a nonprofit linked to Thomas, we talked about that, was hit with felony charge. In an unrelated case, a former neighborhood commissioner was charged with fraud earlier this week in Ward 5. What concerns do you have about whether the ward has some kind of systemic problem? I, I think it validates that it's a systemic problem. This is, it truly is an ethical cancer that's spreading. You know, I, I, I don't know how else to say that. You know, there's so many uh, clouds of doubt and question. Um, and some major changes need to happen, and we need to uh, keep our city moving forward and uh, deal with them right away and not uh, postpone them. I mean, I, to me, what both of these sort of things illustrated is that there, there's a culture, and I'm not going to call it a culture of corruption, but it's a culture of tolerance where, you know, something like this happens, and the people who surround this people, people who are not uh, of bad motive, we're not bad people, but they don't want to speak up, and they they want to. Their instinct is to protect rather than protect themselves and their friendships. I and their know relationships. of no one who covered ANC meetings more, especially ANC meetings in Ward Six, than a certain Mike DeBonis when he was the loose lips columnist. What can I've you tell us about the, ANC, the ANC culture, if you will? Because one well, the everyone is different. I mean, uh, different ANCs have different cultures, and I didn't report on ANC Five B, but I know that the Brooklyn Heart. Beat, which is a great local newspaper, and the uh, Washington Times also did stories on this particular ANC, and and people who knew Shelton and uh, were his sort of uh, you know uh, compadres on that ANC basically covered for him. Uh, they said, you know, this is no big deal. You know, still leave William alone. You know, he's resigned. He's don't worry about him. And and nobody wants to take the step to you know made to protect the public trust. And then you saw it on a different level with Harry Thomas and the D.C. Council. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call some people out here. So Irv Nathan in his uh, in in June set out in in open court, and he's an officer of the court. He's uh, you know bound to to uh, put truthful to file truthful things with the court. Uh, filed a, a, a lawsuit that laid out 90 percent of what was in the federal indictment. And it, it, it showed uh, overwhelming evidence that a crime had been committed. Harry Thomas, for the ensuing six months, offered no scintilla of evidence otherwise to say, well, actually, that's wrong, and this is what I did. He kept his mouth shut. He settled the case. He paid $300,000, well, agreed to pay $300,000 to the city. Uh, with, you know, And he touted, oh, there's no admission of wrongdoing. But, you know... There are lawyers on that council 
who know very well what a civil settlement entails and knows that that's sort of boilerplate and still didn't say a thing about it. Well, so and, uh, and, and many people uh, retreated to, and I'm going to use that purposely, retreated to, well, let the process play right. out. And now you and had, so on Friday, you had, and they, they, they take it to the nth degree. On Friday, you had Marion Barry sit in front of his colleagues and said, well, he's not sentenced yet, so we shouldn't pass judgment. Right. Well, and then, yeah, and there, but uh, that's what I got. As a reporter who has to try to remain above or side of the fray, not above, but a side of the fray, once he pled guilty, I really thought then that there would be the, this wishy-washy, mushy mouth kind of reaction stuff um, would, would stop. And people would say, what Tommy Thomas did to the children of Ward 5 in the city is wrong. And that he should, and all that. But no, we got these mushy little formal statements of, well, of sadness for the family in the city. We've, we've got to move on. No, let's not move on until we clearly say this was horrendous. I used the yes. word vile in my column this week. What he did to the children of the city is vile. No matter how much you love Tommy, how much you love his mother, Romaine, or his. Uh, Father, this is foul behavior, and that it should not be tolerated or counted, or you shouldn't have people stand out in front of Tim Day's house to criticize him for trying to save the money that was intended for the children. Tim Day, your campaign platform, just so, there. You just heard it. This is a, this is the platform of anybody who believes in the rule of law. Exactly. And now that the process is over, let's stop hiding behind it.